Welcome and thank you for joining us for our day at the museum. Museums have the unique ability to transform learning. Instead of merely reading words on a page, we can experience them through our senses. This month's series, A Day at the Museum, will help us to interact with the stories of Jesus as we find out how they connect us to God. Jesus' life and early ministry helps all of us experience, see, hear, taste, and follow God in new, tangible, and real ways. We will be learning that we can see God through Jesus. We can hear God's voice if we listen. Jesus gives us a taste of God's power. The Bible shows us how to experience God, and following God makes us stand out. Welcome to the museum. Hello everyone. It's another great day to spend a day at the museum. Today we get to experience an aquatic life museum, also known as an aquarium. We'll be exploring how we can use our senses to experience God. Now, what is your favorite aquatic animal or ocean animal to see? Shout it out on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three, go! Wow, those are some cool aquatic animals. Now, it's so amazing to walk around an aquarium and see all kinds of fish and sharks and dolphins and penguins. In fact, we are entering the shark exhibit. Let's have fun with the little shark trivia. See how many of these sharks you can name. What do you guys think baptism is and why do you think it's important? Well, baptism doesn't isn't like a checkbox that you need to get to heaven. Baptism is just an outward expression of what you feel inside. It's an outward expression of your decision to follow Jesus your whole life. And it lets everyone around you know, I want to follow Jesus the rest of my life. If you have made a decision to follow Jesus and you want to take that next step of baptism, you can ask one of your family life pastors and they will be so happy to explain what those next steps are. Today's Bible story is about the time when Jesus was baptized, what it meant for Jesus and the people who were there and what it means for us today. Hey there. What an exciting day it has been at the museum. I just love being a tourist and exploring different museums all over the world. We're about to head into the Bible Story exhibit. Last week's special feature included John the Baptist telling us how he helped prepare everyone to have the sight to see and experience God through Jesus. This week, we get to hear about John's amazing encounter with Jesus himself. Who knows what this is? Back in Jesus' time, these were referred to as sandals. John the Baptist was a very important person, but he told everyone that he wasn't as important as they all thought. Even though he was baptizing people in water, which seemed really important, there was someone else who was on their way who would be far more important. This is what he said about that someone in the Bible. In Luke 3, verse 15, it says, 
everyone was expecting the Messiah to come soon, and they were eager to know whether John might be the Messiah. John answered their questions by saying, I baptize you with water, but someone is coming soon who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not worthy to be a slave and untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. John said he wasn't even worthy to untie the straps of this person's sandals. He was trying to say that he would need to serve the Savior that was coming. John continued to baptize people nearly every day. The sound of the water splashing and the joyful shouts from the people getting baptized in the Jordan could be heard from all over. But one day, who should come to the river but the person John had been talking about this whole time? Do you remember who it could be? Jesus! Jesus came. John probably scrambled to make room for Jesus. But Jesus asked John to baptize him. What? That can't be right. But Jesus said to John, this is how it has to be. So when John went to baptize Jesus in the water, when Jesus came back up out of the water, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. Not quite a dove. Well, what a sight that must have been. And now perk up your listening ears because you don't want to miss this next part. In Luke 3, verse 22, it says, And a voice from heaven said, You are my dearly loved son, and you bring me great joy. God spoke and let anyone who was listening know who Jesus was. Jesus truly was God's son. Many people that were there that day got to hear God's voice. They knew that Jesus was God's son and that Jesus was someone they should listen to. It was probably really encouraging for Jesus to hear God's voice saying what he was doing was right. Following this Bible story, Jesus went away by himself to seek out God in prayer after being baptized. God chose to speak to Jesus at that moment. And did you know that we can hear God's voice too if we listen and if we seek God? Have you ever heard God's voice? What was it like? When you visit a museum, you can use all of your senses to experience the exhibits around you. Our five senses are seeing, hearing, tasting, touching, and smelling. Now, I want you to all close your eyes and listen carefully as I tell you about my favorite museum experience. Once a few years ago, I went to Ripley's Aquarium in Okay, you can open your eyes again. Well, did you enjoy hearing about my favorite museum experience? What's that? You couldn't hear me? Huh. Well, sometimes life can be so busy and when we don't take the time to find a quiet place and listen for God's voice, we won't be able to hear him, just like you couldn't really hear much of my story. That reminds me of today's big idea. Today's big idea is we can hear God's voice if we listen. Now, let's say that one more time as loud as we can so everyone can hear us. Ready? 
three, two, one. We can hear God's voice if we listen. Hey there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends. Talk about Jesus and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome to Pro TV. So, just in case you're wondering, yes, I am still stuck in a museum. Long story short, I went to the museum when it was closed. See, I didn't know it was closed, but it was. And now I'm stuck in here all day. Can you believe that? Well, now I gotta find something to do. Maybe I should explore a new part of this museum. It's really big, and there's so much I can learn. Let's go. All right, now we are in the aquatic part of the museum. If it lives in the water, we're gonna learn about it. I mean, what else am I gonna do? That? Well, I could. No. Well, no. Well, eh. Let's learn. Oh, neato. I get to pick what I wanna learn about first. Hmm, let's go with whales. Not many people know that the blue whale is the largest animal to ever live on Earth. Holy moly! The blue whale's heart weighs as much as a car, and their tongue as much as an elephant. That's insane! Let's trash sharks! There are more than 500 species of sharks. And while sharks are as old as the dinosaurs, they are still more active than ever. Oh, and they also don't have any bones. That is terrifying. Let's check out the turtles. Green sea turtles have a more plant-based diet and eat seagrass. By keeping seagrass short, they prevent it from getting tall and harming other sea creatures. Wow, they're like lawnmowers in the ocean. Sea turtles can also hold their breath for over five hours at a time and live up to 100 years old. <laughs> Wowzers, that's just incredible. Thank you, Mrs. Voiceover Museum Woman. You're welcome. Wait, you can hear me? Of course I can hear you. Wow, I thought you were just a robot. Nope. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, so where are you from? Yeah, I'm going to leave now. Oh, okay, cool. Bye. That was awkward. I heard that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Didn't mean it. Wait. Hi, Andy. Carl, what's up, man? Nothing. Did you know turtles are lawnmowers? Um, no. No. Well, they are, and it's pretty cool. I love the ocean. Water is so cool. When was water invented? It's gotta be new, right? Uh, no, water's been around for a while, Carl. Well, agree to disagree. But I do think there's something special about water. Oh, for sure. I mean, even water was a big part of John the Baptist's story. Wait, the locust and honey guy? What did he do with water? Well, we could take a look at the book of John in chapter three. It was at this time, John the Baptist wanted to share a very important message. Oh, a very important message. I wonder what it could be. Well, the thing was, during this time, a lot of people started to talk. Talk? Talk about what? They began to talk about how maybe John the Baptist was the actual Messiah. What? Really? They thought John the Baptist was the son of God? Our savior? What happened? Well, John spoke to the people and he told them, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I will come. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Whoa, so he was telling them and preparing them for Jesus? How cool is that? But what about... What? I don't know, but for some reason when you said the word baptize, it made me think of the water stuff we were talking about. Right, and that makes sense because guess what happened next? John the Baptist jumped into a macaroni rocket ship and flew away to the moon? No. Oh, bummer. Hm. Well, what happened? Well, Jesus came to the river where John was, and it was time for Jesus to do something super cool. Can you guess what that was? Jesus jumped into a macaroni rocket ship and went to the- Carl? What? Jesus could do anything. I just figured he could. Jumped into a macaroni rocket ship and fly to the moon. Exactly. So did he? No. Fine. So what did Jesus do that was so much more important? He got baptized. <gasps> right? Jesus got baptized. And then he began to pray. And guess what happened while Jesus was praying? Jesus jumped in. I don't know, Andy. What did happen? The heavens opened up. The Holy Spirit came down to Jesus and God spoke. What did God say? God said, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. That is so cool. God spoke. Right? And that's so important to remember. God always speaks, but it is up to us to listen. <laughs> wow. I guess that's true.
Hey there kids, today's big idea is we can hear God's voice if we listen. So let's say it out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. We can hear God's voice if we listen. Great job everyone. I loved getting to listen to today's story. What about you, Carl? Huh? I said I loved getting to- Just kidding, I heard you. Oh no, I made Jada angry, watch out. <laughs> she might get all green and start smashing things. Ah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Jada. See you later, kids! Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road Echolocation is a tool that some animals like whales, little bigger than this guy, use to get around in the ocean. They listen for their sound to bounce back so they know if there's any obstacles in their way. Now, humans don't use echolocation, but let's try to be like whales echoing in the ocean for just a moment. I'm going to read some verses from Psalm chapter 29, verses three to nine, one line at a time. And I want you to repeat or echo in a whale voice each line after I read it. In Psalm 29, verses three to nine, David tells us about the voice of God. Let's listen for all of the ways that David describes God's voice. You ready to practice your echoing? The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The voice of the Lord echoes above the sea. The God of glory thunders. The God of glory thunders. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord strikes with bolts of lightning. In his temple, everyone shouts glory. Glory, glory. Oh, give yourselves a round of applause. You were some amazing whales. Wow, from what we can hear in these verses, what is the voice of God like? Well, here's one thing. Even though it's incredibly powerful and majestic, God's voice can sometimes be hard to hear. Just like you had to make an effort to listen closely for each line that I read, we need to make an effort to listen, to hear God's voice. There will always be noise and distractions around us. But remember, we can hear God's voice if we listen. It might not be a thundering voice calling your name to do something. Or it might. That's up to God. But most likely, you will hear God's small voice in everyday ways, like a gentle reminder from loved ones or when you read the Bible. We can hear God's voice if we listen. That's why we need to know how to listen for God's voice. It might not be the most obvious way, but God definitely will speak to us each day. We can hear God's voice in different ways, and you can learn to recognize how God speaks to you. God's voice might come to you as a little nudge that guides you in the right direction, a thought that encourages or comforts you, or a Bible verse that comes to mind that speaks to whatever is happening in your life. Let's practice together. Everyone, that's joining us in person can grab their prayer card. And if you have Seesaw at home and joining us online, it will be one of your activities too. You can journal your prayer or write your prayer on this prayer card by writing or drawing what you feel God is saying to you because we really can hear God's voice if we listen.
today we're going to say our memory verse just like a fish. Are you ready? You're going to take your palms and press it against your cheeks like this and form fish lips, just like you might find at the aquarium. Okay, let's see who can say it the fastest. Are you ready? You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. <laughs> Great job, everyone. Make sure you practice that with your family. Let's close our time together today in prayer. We'll close our eyes, clasp our hands, and bow our heads. Dear God, we know that we can hear your voice if we listen. Thank you for speaking to us. Help us listen for your voice and recognize the moments when you speak to us, even in small, not so obvious ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See you next time, everyone.